Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Due Process League. We have an exciting match today. It's going to be Arik Ardvarks versus SPG Sanctus Palma Granada. Here with me today is Biako, my fellow caster, and I'm Addix. Biako, would you like to say anything? Uh, just glad to be here for another week of Due Process League. A little bit early match today as uh, <laughs> it caught me a bit off guard, but we are here and we are ready to go. Definitely. So I'm just going to quickly go over these teams. On the side of Eric Ardvarks, we've got Busquick, Lone Wolf, Lord of Poop, Real Elsewhere, and Vup. And on the side of Sanctus Palmer Granada, SPG, we've got Bud, KaiQ, Kofu, Sleep, and Tibor Taran. So... I'm not really familiar with these teams, but we'll definitely see a close match between the two, I feel like. Both of these teams do seem ready. Uh, we'll try to get into it as soon as possible. But do you know any of these players, Biako? Do any of them stand out to you at all? I have not met any of these players yet, so this is going to be a surprise match to me. Um, I'm not sure what to expect on this one, uh, but it should be a good match either way. We haven't really had any stinkers yet so far in the DPL, and... Uh, that's, I'm sure that's going to continue here today. I'd have to agree with you. I've met uh, Bud and Tipper Terran, but I haven't really seen anybody from the side of Eric Aardvarks, like active in the community as much. Yes, I've seen them definitely online playing. Holy. But I haven't really talked to any of them. So we'll see who the brain is behind the team. We'll see who plays what. Definitely just waiting for these matches to go live, and it looks like they are queued up here, so we'll be able to jump in here right now. Well, let's get right into this match. I am excited to see what goes on. So just as a reminder, this is going to be played in ranked mode. It is going to be best of nine. First to five points will win. Ooh, look at that. The, the cold shoulder pose going into match. I like that. You see, we've been seeing this from a few teams where they have their own little like special pose that they do. You know, I don't know. I don't know if uh, the devs can ever add in the ability to do the, uh, the Ginyu Forge pose, but one day maybe. All right. Right off the start, we are going to be seeing one of these new maps. It is a variation of Kill House where there's a lot of vertical play going on. There's definitely some windows on that security roof area, but there's also entrance points towards VIP. Now, there's actually this really interesting uh, abusive, like, I would call it a glitch, so hopefully neither team uses it. But in VIP, this couch actually clips through the wall, so you can um, you get a little pixel peek onto the red door, and you can wall bang them. So we'll see if either team uses that, but it does look like they want to go for a security take. Somebody playing a sniper up there could definitely hurt our guard barks. It looks like they want to go for a backstage push and just go straight onto the bomb site. While Arc is concerned about this, it seems they aren't worried about lobby at all, which is completely free on the side of SPG. Yeah, Maybe we'll getting see, rid of that. We'll see what what they do as far as a power weapon goes. We have seen a lot of teams forgo using one on the first map just you know, for safety reasons, save that for a later game. But, you know, it'll make a big difference if they decide to take either the mop or the auto shetty here. Um, I don't know if there's any place really useful for either of them other than putting the mop up in VIP. But if that that red door got breached up there, they would be in dire straits very quickly. They do definitely yeah. have two players there, though. We'll see how they play it out. And it does look like there is going to be a mop, actually, or is that Allegros? I can't see from here. I think that's Allegros. There is going to be three players in VIP, and Busquick is going to be below on dance floor, maybe. Very a interesting. Very stretch. Yeah, they're very spread out, but the two guys up in the northern side of the map can fall back fairly quickly, and we will see that attack come in on the northern side here. As they move around now over onto the western side of the map. A little bit of window banging action there going on. Vup getting a little bit of chip damage in onto one member, but no kills so far. Taking a little in return. And they have gained entry into lobbies. See what they can gain from here. And here comes the wall banks from that Legros. A lot of damage coming out on one member of the attacking side here, and they now have made their way over into VIP. The close-range combat coming out here. Vaparic, he's in trouble. 
He may have to fall back on the stairs. Buck cannot really do a whole lot to help him. He does get the first kill. Sleep now engaging him. Sleep going to come swing around the corner, trying to get the kill with the AP-25. Can't do it. And now here comes the attack onto the bomb area. Tibber is the only one left alive with that attack. Hopefully went down in the meantime. He's trying to get over to that bomb, but still got one member over there kind of guarding it. But now here comes all, all the kills. One member left alive. And it's Lone Wolf, but I think he's actually disconnected. I can't yeah, well, be good ever. Yeah, oh, and it finally uh, registered that he was killed in that action. So, first round. Interesting, to say the least. We saw SPG go for the lobby peak. And if you'll notice, they did take that chip damage, but Vafarik was down to 5 HP. He was basically a dead man walking there. He couldn't do much for his team. So that chip damage, it actually hurt S uh, It actually hurt Arik Aardvark's. And then from there, when they give up that VIP control, they basically give up the site. Because uh, Vup was like lit up, we saw a rotate come out from Lone Wolf, but that left that left uh, Lord of Pooh um, in backstage alone to fight a 1v2. And that really didn't work out for them. The rotate was there, the idea was there, but with the damage already done onto those players, I feel like SPG had already won the round and they clearly showed that they did. Yeah, pincer attacks uh, tend to be a very effective tool for the attacking side, and we saw that used to the fullest right there. Both teams definitely realized that vertical ground on VIP was very important, but we are going to see a C-Store layout now. It is going to have a skylight in storefront. This is one of the older layouts uh, that came before the update the other day, and it is going to be a bathroom bomb. This is one of the only layouts that does not have the bomb in storefront currently. So we'll see what the teams can do. This map has been in the rotation for a little bit longer, meaning that these teams might actually have a setup strategy for this map. And it does seem like that's the case. A lot of teams like to go for this shed area, and it seems SPG knows what they're doing. Arc Aardvarks is aware of that, though. Looks like they want to drop some barbed here and possibly just block them off. Maybe, maybe we'll see some shotguns come out. Maybe we'll see some APs from the side of SPG but it doesn't look like they want to barb off storefront at all. That skylight is just completely open. And there might be some players in storage and freezer to watch it. But other than that, it looks like there's a lot of map control just being immediately given up to SPG if they're able to open up Shed, especially with that button right there. The this button is, right there is... This has been a very tricky map for the defenders because they have to choose whether or not they're going to hold office and teller and defend that power because the, the skylight can see right into Teller, and it's a very dangerous spot to sit there and decide to hold it. But the bomb is on the opposite side of the map, so if they want to focus over there, maybe risk using a few flares to defend that position, that might be the better call. Looks like there is going to be an auto shoddy in play in office, and the barbed wire is definitely going to be there. We're also going to see a few groovers coming out towards the site, and kind of an interesting pick, an Igmar at close range in bathroom. He's holding on a toy, uh, excuse me, next to the toilet. So it gives him a little bit more range, but we'll see what he can do with it at that close. So it is going to be that original shed push coming in from the looks of it over by SPG. Looks like they are going to try and get the, the breach onto the shutters too. Kogu's just circling around on the roof. He's not going to find a whole lot. Everybody's pretty well hidden. One Molly coming out there to block him off, but now Sleep is going to be the first one to push in with Bud. Just pretty quick three man stack bowling in, and Buf, Buf, I'm sorry, Vafarik is first to go down. But here's going to come that auto shouting to play. Bus Clark is coming in. He's going to come around the corner into three of them. Or, I mean, he's going to back off very quickly. Probably uh, got a little bit of a scent of what was going on there. And he's kind of pinned on his own right now. He's got to get a few kills here with that auto shoddy. And he's going to push out very dangerous, but he gets the first frag. Tibber, though, will take him down. And so we have just one member left alive of Aardvarks, and it's Lone Wolf with that Legro stack there, and he's not going to be able to do a whole lot. Very quick, quick and clean round there. They do pick up the auto shoddy over on the SPG side. Three members left alive. They're just going to wait for that Molly to burn down and then go in for the defuse. So quick, yeah. clean round from them. Busquick definitely could have done a lot more work there. Yes, he got the kill needed for the round on his side, but... If that auto shoddy had been out just a little bit sooner without hesitation, that would have been possibly two to three kills right there. That could have even, if 
the park didn't go down as quickly and he decided to fall back to his teammate with the auto, we wouldn't have seen that freezer player die. That freezer player would have been much more aware of what was happening because they were definitely expecting that shed play and they couldn't figure out a counter play for it when SPG just completely changed the plan and wall charged straight into the uh, storefront area. Yeah, Vup, I think, was originally meant to be just kind of an info grabber, like, hey, tell us from there into storefront, and he just got pinned very quickly from their push and couldn't fall back. Very unfortunate if that was the case, but we it's move on now to uh, map three, SPG leading with a 2-0. And this should be a factory map, I believe. So maybe we'll get one of the new ones with a catwalk on it or a sky bridge. I'm pretty sure the devs have labeled it. And if it is one of those new maps, we'll see uh, what the teams can bring to it. It does no. look like one of the, uh, the newer layouts. On the north side, there is going to be an alleyway. And we'll see bomb inside a storage container. So definitely a new layout. Very interesting. Little, no, uh, no catwalk, though. So we won't get to see that come into play just yet today. We might see something come out of Toxic here. Both teams are a little bit concerned about those positions. So we'll see what they can do about it. It does seem like Arik is concerned about a storage push. And SPG is looking for that power play, possibly, because they originally planned to go for it on C-Store, but it just isn't happening now. So all three entrance points are just there for for spg and they're still in the they're still in the process of making that decision will they go for fan do they pinch bomb as soon as they get in are they going to go for power because that office position with the window is going to be very strong for Arik aardvarks we could possibly see a player on docks maybe even one in back storage as long as they continue to rotate out when they need to and fall back when they need to they could definitely keep the man advantage to finally take a round off of SPG. So not seeing a whole lot of marks coming out right now. There will be one barbed wire going down over into Toxic to slow down the push towards Light Switch. Other than that, uh, it looks like they, got, they are going to be making that push all the way around through the south and hit that western entrance door into Toxic. Might be a double push, actually. Fan and Toxic both being hit at the same time. Uh, again, pincer moves throws a lot of chaos in the motion, and we'll see if Ara can handle this. Definitely looks like they might be able to, especially with that mop holding on to storage. It seems like they do want to do something with hit and run. They want to take a tag and just fall back, especially considering what's happened in these past few rounds. There we go. The first breach coming in on the western side. Two members of SPG moving in, taking over Toxic. Here's the mop. Can he get the first kill? No, he's instantly pushed off the site. And then, uh, do we get a disconnect? I just saw him disappear unless Sleep got the kill on that. One member has gone down at least on each side from what I can see, though. That wasn't now, cool on that. Yeah, storage has now been taken over, and SPG is just bullying their way in. Uh, Voop needs to keep his eyes out. Oh, and he is taken down from behind. It's all down to Bisquick right now up on the catwalk there, and he cannot do anything. It's going to be a f just clean 3-0. I mean... SPG look very well oiled right now, getting a little fun TKs in before the match is over. Mm, I'd have to agree. They are working like a machine. They are geared up for this. And we did see hit and run there, actually. The mop ta tagged up Tibber and immediately fell back. But luckily, a trade was there. And then we saw the trade come out um, from... We saw a pick from Pooh onto Tibber, cleaning up that mop pick. And then we saw sleep with the trade on that. That's what happened there. You really need to pair somebody with the mop because if, if the mop is forced to aim for headshots and headshots only, that's going to put a very, you know, it, it's just not going to be doable for most players. And exactly. if you got another guy that's sitting there ready to tap a, you know, a single body shot off to help them, that's going to be a very good and quick combination for taking down the attacking side. And, you know, they just didn't have that there. I, I have to disagree with leaving the mop all by himself. Yeah, we are going to see the Killhouse layout back here, and we'll see what Eric decides to do 
on this push. Maybe they'll take VIP control. Maybe they'll just take this security roof, which has seen like a very strong position, but we haven't seen either team utilize it very much so far. It seems like they are concerned about that backstage play because they did have a lurker there. They did have one player there. So possibly SPG might be playing off that. SPG is definitely worried about this long line of sight from VIP all the way to those lobby stairs. So we'll see if they set a player on that, possibly with a, possibly with a Mop or Nygmar. But like you said, most of these teams, they don't bring a super weapon. They don't bring a power weapon at the first round because of that risk involved with it. If they give up that, they've basically given up another round. Because if you drop that Mop, you've basically given up uh, Factory. If you drop the Auto Shotty, you basically could have given up C store. Giving them that utility is just too much for them. It, there's a reason we have this like game balance between these two sides. There's a reason why there's less guns available to the attacking side than the defending side, because the defending side has these two power weapons. But it does look like there's a mop coming out in first round, and it's gonna be holding those security windows. A different thing coming out. So we'll see how Eric re uh, responds to this. And there's going to be a lot of players like sitting on the site in this dance floor area. Possibly just a power play here coming out from SPG because they know that they're up 3-0. If they can get this round here, you know, they're going to have four match points coming ahead. That that can put them in a very good spot. Um, VIP is going to be the target here, though, for four members of ARC. They're moving up slowly. And they will be uh, met by two defenders here. So Sleep and Timber are both up there. Um, it's going to be that full flank around now, it looks like, to the northwestern side. One member, though, of SPG, I'm sorry, of ARC, though, uh, Lord of Pooh, he's going to be uh, flanking around and through security and instantly taken down. Bud, ready for it, single op shot to the dome. Just absolutely critical that he got that kill there. And that's going to set ARC on the back foot. Another member goes down right now. Real else is nowhere to be found. And it's a 3v5 as they try to make their way in through VIP. Another kill comes out. Sleep is the only one to go down, and now Tibber. So they did even it up a little bit, but here's Kai. He's coming around on the backside of Bisquick, gets that final frag, and it's going to be a clean 4-0 right now. Five match points looking ahead for SPG. I think they've got this one pretty well secured, and the use of that super weapon in round one definitely paid off. So far, it's looking like it. I mean, we've seen them go time and time again with these really really good positionings now they did play off similar positionings but as you saw we had those two players down in lower dance floor and i feel like that really helped them because even though the main kill of the round was that mop shot in the northeastern part of the map that definitely put pressure onto uh, onto spg and it kind of forced them to push it, it made them have to act faster because they were a man down and they didn't want spg to take advantage of that it was either push in early and try to refrag that or just wait it out because the more time passes, you're going to have more issues with having that man disadvantage. Yeah. The, the pincer attack again, the strategy of the day, we saw that come out, but they went with a four, one split and the, the one man by himself instantly deleted by the mop. And that's just going to completely set their tactics in the, you know, a huge imbalance. And we saw SPG just come out on top very easily with that one. It looks like the Aardvarks want to go for a storage play here. Not even concerned about storefront or the button, or even power, to say the least. And we'll see how SPG reacts to this. They haven't really set up anything yet. We might see some default barbed wires around that freezer and storage area, but I'm not sure if they're dedicated to putting any players in arcade or office, per se. We are going to see a possible wall breach from storage into site. That would completely cut off this freezer rotation and force a wide rotate. And it looks like SPG isn't too concerned about the north side of the map. They are a little bit concerned about this skylight drop, but it does look like they're ready for the storage and freezer kind of split here. It looks like we're going to see a potential bomb rush, uh, run in, wall breach, smoke off the bomb, go for the instant defuse, a strat that does work in a panic sometimes. Uh, we'll take a look here and see if SPG brings out their second super weapon. If they just try to double down with the mop and auto shotty on it one does round look here, like it, but he doesn't have an auto shotty on that storage position, and that's going to be very strong for him, especially yeah. with that barbed wire. 
We usually see the auto shoddy played up towards office here, and with it being down right in storage, right in the face of the bomb, along with sleep, uh, that can be a very, very quick uh, counter to this attempted push in. So we'll find out here in a moment. We'll be one member going up on top, trying to get a look through the skylight. But uh, again, it's a 4-1 split that we've seen from ARC. It hasn't worked out for them so far. And there goes the breach. An instant rotates coming down. Kayik and Kofu both moving down into the lower area of the map. Wall breach goes out. It's going to be Bud engaging with the auto shot. He gets the first kill. Lord of Pooh. On the receiving end of that, they're going to try and refrag over onto this, but there's now four members of the SPG down there. The Molly comes out, blocks them in. They've got them pinned. The member of the on the roof of Ark, of Ark needs to do something right now. He is uh, basically not helping. Kaik gets the kill, or gets some chip damage, though, before being taken down. It's down to a 3v4, but all members are in the bomb area right now for SPG. We're going to see Lone come in. He gets one kill. He gets a second kill on the Bud. Big plays here coming out from Lone Wolf. He gets taken down by Sleep, and his teammates are nowhere to be found. They need to move in. This quick is moving in right now. Gets killed by Sleep. One member left alive. Hibber is engaging with him. We'll see if he can't do something, but he's in a 1v2 situation, and he's kind of falling back a bit. He's, he doesn't have time for this. He's maybe reorganizing, getting himself you know set up, figuring out what to do, but he's only got 30 seconds left on the clock. Flashbang goes out. Tibber's in the corner. Sleep's waiting for him. He comes around. See Sleep gets the kill. Tibber now goes down, and it's a big play by Real Elsewhere, and he manages to come through. Uh, I'll give that round also to Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf came in early on, and he took down not only one of those groupers there, but he also took down Bud, and that was a big, yeah. big play from him to take down the auto shotty early on into that map. People are definitely adapting to using that brace laser on the attacker shotgun because using that at close range you can just pump somebody and they'll be completely gone it doesn't matter how fast the re they react if you know they're there and you're ready to shoot them they can't react they can maybe get one shot off but as soon as your laser's on them the, the fight's already over with that attacker shotgun we may see a lot more plays coming out with that later in, in the season because of the changes with it and i'd love to see something creative come out of that Definitely. So, and just to keep in mind, you know, they did use up their auto shoddy on that. They have already used the map, though. I didn't see it put out that map. Um, did they have it at the map out? They I don't know. If they... The... they did not have the map out. Okay, so they, I think they the could have put that back in the in inventory anyway. And yes, that it could still be a factor. factor here. Yes, we may see it be pulled out on factory here because there are some very, very long lines of sight here, especially in this alleyway at the north side somebody could easily cover fan and even if it's not a kill a simple body shot onto the player getting that uh door charge or whatever charge they're using down onto the fan could definitely swing the tide in the defender's favor and it does look like art the aardvarks want to go for a toxic push something similar to what sbg did but this time they're going to be going for power they're not just gonna pincer the site they're gonna go for power we might see a fan play come out which could contribute to the pincer, but it seems like most of the team is just dedicated to this this west side push here, and it looks like SPG isn't even concerned about it. They've completely just crossed that off from the map. They're probably going to be playing on site in an office, and it does look like that. They are concerned about uh, docks and office, it seems like, so they are going to be setting players there, and we might see somebody on the close left of that north uh, north toxic door which is something that's been marked on both teams, it seems. So an interesting engagement might come out there. And SPG does seem concerned about the fan, but not as much as the Aardvarks were. I'd say so the key here, the one thing that our, our cannot have happen is getting a player down early from that mob. They just absolutely cannot have that happen in any way, shape, or form right now. Or, or even just chip damage from all the long-range rifles that SPG are going to be bringing into this. They need to come in. They need to get those early entry frags. And, you know, they have to be on top of this game from the start if they want to try and push this, you know, three more rounds towards a tie. It's going to be a hard thing to do, but they definitely have the chance to do it. The potential is <laughs> there, and wow. That's all was I've that, got. Was say. that a frag that, that just came in? That was a frag in? all the mm. way from the north side of Alleyway. 
Oh my goodness, Kofu is going to, he's going to want to walk that one back and learn how to do that. That was beautiful there. And that's an advantage that we were talking about that they needed. That looked like a set strat that they maybe had practiced before or at least knew what to do. So here comes that push in the Toxic and Sleep is just going to fall right out of there. He doesn't want anything to do with that. They're going to give them Toxic. They're going to give them control over Light Switch. Lights go out. We'll see those flares come out here momentarily, I would imagine. Another member goes down. It's going to be Volf killing over on the Tibur. Kaik gets a return frag, but Lone Wolf now evens that back up on the key. It's 2v3 two, two right now. And, oh, no, Sleep in the corner there. He gets one frag, but then is instantly traded, all coming down on a one last member of SPG as he tries to stop this defuse. He's going to be able to come in and get some shots on the smoke. There's two members there. Is he going to be able to do it? Gets one kill on the buff, but the bomb defuse has been stopped. Lone Wolf is in there in the smoke. It's a smoke fight in the box. Bisquick is just on the backside. He's just waiting to see what happens. And here comes Bud for the exchange around, and it's going to be Bisquick to save him. And there is the bomb defuse. So it's going to be four to two now. They're going to get at least one more chance at this as they try to go around and pick up just a few more attacker weapons to see if they can use those to greater effect in the final round coming up. So there will be no more super weapons. That was definitely important for uh, our hard parts to win, but Bud definitely had the potential to uh, to clutch that up. There are only four angles you can be holding in that little storage container where the bomb is, and if he just started deciding to like spray or even tape, take a, a mop shot in there, he could have won another fight. That was definitely scary, and Bud could have clutched that up. But I'm glad to see Arik is finally getting on their feet. They're standing up to, to what SPG is doing to them. They've got the strategies to take him out now. Big shout out to that entry frag, though. That's something we have not seen uh, come into such great a play as that, where somebody just decides, hey, I'm going to throw a frag through this window. Lands right at the feet of one of the defending players and takes him out before the round has even really begun. The only other time I've seen that in play is not even in Pro League. I've seen uh, members of Fluff do that on one of the old factory layouts where the uh, the office was on the west side and there was a catwalk on the uh, the northwest side. They would frag that, but we haven't seen any other team until now do something like that. And that's impressive to say the least. It does look like SPG wants to go for a VIP take. And that's going to be... Pretty scary, considering we did see uh, Tibor take advantage of that pixel peak on the couch. And I wonder if they're concerned about that at all. We've seen VIP be in the point of contention on this map twice over so far. It, it's always been met with two players on the defending side being there. Um, and both with mixed results. I mean, we've seen a win and we've seen a loss, you know, for either side on here. So It looks like the Aardvarks are concerned about office at all. They just want to sit on the site. They want to have these players sitting in lobby, sitting in VIP, and it looks like SPG might want to try to cut that off with a smoke. There, that smoke there right in front of the dance floor to lobby rotation. A player could definitely push straight through that, but that smoke is going to be uh, an interesting cutoff, possibly giving them a pick on VIP, or maybe if they're pushing lobby, it'll give them a pick. We are going to see that same sort of lurker in backstage, but this time there's going to be two. They're going to have each other to back each other up. There is a buddy system finally going on here. It's going to be Lone Wolf with a shotgun up there. And we'll see what he can do. So yeah, here we go. It's going to be a pretty fast push over here towards VIP. We're going to see if SPG is just going to go for a very aggressive maneuver here. One member left going around for the top side flank. That's Bud. And here we go. Four members coming in. Volf just instantly deleted. He could not do anything to hold off the push into VIP. And, oh, I just got kicked out of game, but I got a backup stream here, so we'll see what's going to go down there here. Great uh, coming out, it seems like. There were two trade kills, and now Sleep has another. Here comes that bomb to fuse out, and it's going to be possibly, almost definitely, the round for SPG. One member coming in, trying to stop the defuse. Gets the defuse stopped, but he's going to be just surrounded by two more players of SPG. SPG going to finish off, get that bomb defuse. 5-2, to two. so it was a valiant effort here coming in from Ark, but uh, just could not, you know, come back through four whole rounds of, you know, win or die. And 
that'll be uh, the set one going over to SPG. I thought they were very clean and very precise uh, for most of their maps. Got a little bit carried away once they had that 4-0 scoreline. You know, they seemed like they were trying to force uh, the victory out a little bit too much for those two rounds, but then eventually did pull it in on the third map. I definitely have to agree with it. SPG, they felt like they had a comfy lead, so it feels like they just started to slack off a little bit. Obviously, they still put strategies into play, and they were focused on some very specific things, like that couch peak. Um, we saw we saw Tibber push against that couch peak. He actually wall banged that there um, because he he knew there was a player playing there. He got into the mind of Ardvarks and was immediately able to get a frag because of it. But I feel like in the end, definitely um, until Killhouse, when Ardvarks had two rounds up finally. SPG just didn't really bring the heat. They were just dead focused on sticking to the strategy and sticking to the plan, it seems like. Yeah, Arc right now, they just need to reset, refresh themselves, you know, get their minds squared away, come in for map two a little bit harder and heavier. And we saw them being a little bit more confident um, once they were on the 4-0 the line. You know, we saw some very crisp play from them. So we definitely know that they're capable of that. They just need to lead off with that instead of, you know, like pulling those better strategies out once, you know, it's all on the line, it seems. Definitely, Biako, but let's give these teams just a moment to uh, to recuperate. We'll see what Aardvarks can do in the next map, and we are going to be going through a short break here. So thank you all for tuning in to set one. Set two is going to be coming in soon, and will we see SPG take it, or will Aardvarks lead it to a third map, or a third set, excuse me, We'll find out after this break.
Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back. We are going to be going to set two of SPG versus Aardvarks. We had some interesting rounds happen uh, in the first set. We did see SPG win it out in 5-2 fashion for the first set, but Aardvarks definitely put up a fight. They ended up getting two rounds, which kind of threw SPG off guard. They kind of had to go back to their strategies. Anything you have to say on that, Biako? Yeah, again, just get get that mental reset, come back in and realize, you know, you, you, you are capable of beating this team. You can get off onto the right foot here early, set them onto the back foot at the same time. And, you know, maybe that's all they need. They need to, you know, put the pressure onto SPG first and, you know, move from there. That could be, you know, something that SPG hasn't experienced. We'll see how the reactions are, though, because... Aardvarks, they know how SPG plays now. It doesn't look like they've played them before. And now that they've gotten an idea of it, we may see some more rounds come out from them. We may see, may see some interesting plays happen. And it looks like we're going to have a match restart here real quick. One of those minor little things going on. Yep, just some uh, technical issues with the game itself. We will see uh, the teams resetting quickly. And we will be right into it. But uh, who do you think is going to win this second set, Bianco? Because my money is honestly on Aardvarks. They've definitely put up a fight, and I want to see them win one. I think it's going to be closer, but I still, at this point, have to go to SPG. I think if they can keep uh, keep their strategies clear, clean and concise, that they will have every advantage going in here. And it will be, you know, Aardvarks to break them. Um, if Aardvarks can come out and break them early... I think that we will see a little bit more of a game, but I, I'm not sure. I feel like it's going to go to three maps, uh, but that's just me, you know, and I hope to be wrong. I hope to be proven wrong because, you know, more game, more better. Um, yeah. We would definitely like to have a third map here, uh, but that all comes down to uh, what Ara can do at this point. All right, and it looks like uh, we are getting ready for the match to start now. We just need one more player in the server, and we'll be ready. Ready for an exciting match. Yeah, the fun part about due process is even we do not know what maps are going to come out. We know that there's going to be a kill house or a sea store or a factory map. We know that we're going to see, you know, one of each of those usually, but we don't know which ones. The players don't know which ones. And this is what's uh, going to be really fun going forward in due process league as more maps are added, more features are added. Uh, we'll get a lot more of that. Um, mixed uh a bag of stuff that can happen especially as uh, new tile sets come out you know in the future exactly. we may see um, teams stick with strategies or we may see some of the newer teams just try to improvise their strategies as they go into these new maps because uh, as has been mentioned these procedurally generated maps are going to keep changing there's going to be new ones constantly so each team is going to have to either adapt and they're going to have to improvise or they're going to have to be very, very fast and know the game very well to come up with solid strategies right as they come out. So it just looks like all players are active in game, just waiting for that match to go live so that we can jump in here. And again, other things in the game will change uh, coming up too. Uh, some of the old weapons from before beta came out. Um, the riot shields and the cart gun are still uh, in, you know, they're, they're getting a rework and they'll be back. So we'll see the strategies change as those come back into play. Uh, and then, as I said before, there's going to be uh, new map additions. Like we've already seen factory uh, now has catwalks that sometimes appear into it, given a very uh, unique verticality to the map. Um, wrong sides again. Oh no, we got to wait for another reset. So, and again, one of the biggest things that's going to be uh, great for the game is matchmaking tools and all that, where teams get to pick their sides and whatnot. Uh, for the sake of comp competition right now, it's it's a luck of the draw which side they get. So if they don't end up on the correct side um, going into game, they have to cancel out the match, re and then jump back in and hopefully get that sorted out. So that's just one of the minor technical difficulties we have right now. And it's it's going to be a thing that's easily worked out and in the near future. The devs have been working hard, and we very, very much appreciate the hours that they've been putting into this recently. Yeah, they've been communicating a lot with the community recently. They've 
already implemented that breaking glass like they said they would. And that was given to us in, I would say, record time. They they told us about breaking glass coming back. And that was out with the next update within a week. That was extremely fast. And that completely changed up how rotations are done on, on C-Store. And even some plays on Killhouse with, uh, with Breezeway, uh, it changed up that how both of those were played. And looks like we have one full team ready. We are waiting for our second team to get on queue up for this match. But I've still, I'm still going to stick with my prediction from the Aardvarks. With them going to be, with them being on attack this time around. I definitely feel like they could get the starting rounds to uh, push the momentum in their favor. I am a little bit concerned for what Bud can do, though. He has had some really good plays on his side with the mop, so he might be able to immediately shut them down if they decide to bring out uh, one of those power weapons very early into the game. Bud definitely seems to be their power weapon player that we've seen him with the mop and the auto shoddy. Uh, the mop to great effect on that one round, um, as Eric had the single player trying to flank through. On the top side of the map, he instantly shut it down with a single headshot from the mop. And that was just, you know, beautiful. And when your play relies on any kind of pincer movement, as I said before, if one side of that gets taken down instantly and the team on the defending side realizes that, it can just be a full crunch onto the remaining, you know, arm of that coming in. And that's exactly what happened there. And you know, you just can't have that happen. If you're going to have the pincer, uh, I don't know if I agree with a 4-1 a split because, it, again, if you lose that one, um, you're just going to have no flanking potential on the entire round. Um, exactly. And that just it just comes down to it. And then no chance to trade. So when you're facing a mop and you send two people in, if he takes the first guy down, the second man can come in and counter the mop pretty easily usually. He's not always going to get off a second shot. Uh, before going down it's a very very tricky weapon to use um, fans of csgo will know like how op players play and it's i'll say this it's harder to use the mop in due process because the reload time is slower you have fewer rounds in the mag your movement's a little bit slower so you definitely have to be you know ready to take one shot and just get out of there and fall back and reset your position entirely you can't keep taking a fight again and again and again Exactly. Two, um, we've seen two strategies that teams have really been relying on. We've seen hit and run, which is where, um, say, a player with a mop or a player with something like an Igmar gets some damage off and then falls back to support their team. And we've also seen a lot of the buddy system to get trades off, which is one of the more effective ways to, uh, to clean up rounds. Um, does look like both our teams are ready. But with the buddy system, it seems like both players are going to be, you know, it's more likely to get that trade when you have the buddy system. Yes, you can still trade one-on-one, -on -one, but having those buddies there or just having another teammate in the general area to back you up with, say, a grenade or something like that, or even a Molotov, or even a road flare, just to back you up if the power gets hit, all of that helps. It's, it's very team-oriented especially with the different movement speeds for guns, some gunfights you just can't take. If you're a mop at close range, you can't do that. That's why we saw Bud pull out the LS on that one factory round where uh, the bomb was in the shipping container because those engagement, those guns just aren't built for those engagements. And it's, it's frustrating to see you lose all of your weapons that were built for that situation, and then you're just left with one or two players that don't have the right guns to win it. They have to go pick up guns, or they just have to risk trying to get the kill with a secondary. And that definitely sways the favor um, to the side that got those early picks, leading into the man advantage and all these other advantages that you can get from an early pick or, say, early damage and falling back. And, and I believe we are getting another reset coming in here, if I am correct. Uh, interesting enough, only considering there's only two sides, I'd say that's about, what is it, a 12.5% chance of happening three times in a row? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So minor things, but we'll get, them to, we'll get lucky here eventually. Oh, we'll get <laughs> lucky here eventually. Yeah, but uh, going, going back onto the, uh, the buddy system, the thing to always remember is the 
attacking side has half again more health, 50% more health than the defenders. So 150 health. So if they buddy up, that's 300 HP coming at you when you've only got 100. So mm. even if it's buddy buddy, that's still like imagine having a whole extra person there worth of you know health to soak up and it's a very very good uh strategy to use on the attacking side to have multiple players coming in tightly because again there's no frag capability of the defenders they don't have frag grenades they only have a molly so they can only do a little bit of chip damage over time and so there's no risk of grouping up unless you've dropped a frag previously in the game but as we see, the, the common strat is you open the door, you throw your frags in. You don't ever risk giving those over to the defending side to carry into the next round. Exactly. So, and that's why I feel shotguns are become are becoming much more powerful, especially with that laser, um, with the laser adjustments that they've made. Um, um, now that you, if you hip fire, you can't uh, single pump somebody. You have to have a laser if you'd like to single pump somebody. And if it, um, I feel like that could really affect the meta, except for on Factory, because Factory is one of those longer range maps where you can only hold a shotgun, shotgun on, say, Office or on uh, Storage or something similar like that. But having shotguns is going to be the defender's friend here uh, from here on out. Even if it's just the secondary super shoddy, um, we might see a lot of shotgun play come out over, say, the Gruber. Or maybe even the knack. The knack does have more potential to get multi kills, but when you have to hit those headshots to get 150 health gone when you only have 100, you you've got to put a lot of training into it. Yes, and for that, we've seen a lot of uh, a, a sneaky bit of play coming in on defending sides where players will often try and you know let you know a one or two attackers come past them before popping out and you know doing a gotcha play from behind but i mean if you have a players at this caliber they're going to be checking their corners you know they're going to be checking all the cubbies and hidey places doesn't really work out as well as you would hope and um you know it's 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 still definitely possible for the defenders to win as we've seen them win many many rounds it's just you know they have to be on the ball because they do have a disadvantage, I would say, other than having to just let the attackers come to them. You know, they know where the bomb is. They know where they can be to defend the bomb. But that health and technology advantage is one of the very fine aspects of this game. And it looks like it's going to be yet another reset. What are we down to about? Wow. Six, 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 six and percent. And six and a fourth. <laughs> wow. A one in 20 chance this time. Um, it looks like we may just go straight into it here. We'll have to get word from our uh, production crew. And we are going to be going with it. A little bit disappointing to see. I would have really loved to see Aardvarks on the attacking sides first. But I guess uh, Fate just does not like that today. Fate is in the favor of SPG, just like you are, Biako. Oh, it yeah. looks like my favorites. Ah, there may not be a second chance for them. <laughs> It looks like we're just going to have to blame Tripnel for the uh, the match setup. You know, he's got that single-sided coin that just keeps flipping heads for <laughs> the team <laughs> wanting to be on, on defense. <laughs> All right. First map layout. We are going to see a kill house layout with a balcony on, that, uh, on the security side. So there are going to be three main entrance points. You can go straight into the site here from Dance Floor. You can take lobby control and go for that north VIP and bar area, or you could just bust straight into security with your teammates on these north windows to back you up on office. I have seen some very interesting plays here. Um, I have actually seen an attacker pick up a mop on this map and get two kills on these security windows. So having a sniper there could definitely be, be beneficial to either side. And it looks like Aardvarks is looking to play in office it seems they're slightly concerned about that lobby take though but SPG isn't looking to do it they're just looking to go with the flow they want to do whatever they can and it looks like they are concerned about office where one of those aardvark players is going to end up maybe a line of sight is in interest for SPG it looks like they want to take a window position to watch all the way into sight because with that window there on security they've basically cut off half the site from one player we might actually see a Sabre come out now because 
um, the modifications to the scope now make it full color. So you can use it in day or night. There's basically a guaranteed sniper. And we are going to see a, uh, a player in office, just like Aardvarks wanted. We're also going to see one backstage ready to rotate onto the bomb. He is going to be holding onto an AK. And we're also going to see a security player. It looks like it's going to be up with a knack, maybe listening for these players. I'm not so sure about this setup coming in from Aardvarks right now. They're very spread out. They got three guys to the southern side of the map, two very far to the north in VIP. Um, if this is a quick entry here from SPG, they're going to be able to just hammer in on these this one group. So here comes the one push into office, or I'm, I'm sorry, into security now. It's going to be Buff that's going to be taking the brunt of this, and he's all by himself. Uh, Real Elsewhere is up there with the mop, but uh, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do a whole lot. Molly coming out to slow down that push, and Real Elsewhere st still worried about lobby. They're very concerned about lobby, and I don't need, know if they need to be. And there, there's the call. They're going to be falling back right now. Buff taking the fight in the door. He needs to get out of there. He's got. He just ran past Kaik. Kaik doesn't know it, and now Tibber's taking the fight. Tibber gets the kill over onto Vup, and almost no damage traded for that. So everybody resetting here as Lord of Pooh is going to be the one holding in. Gets the first kill over on the t on the Tibber there. Very important that he got that. That door is blocked off with a bit of barbed wire to slow them down at this time. Sleep's now up in the office. Kofu's dropped down into the main bar area as he's making his way around. And I think they're going to finally going to be figuring out that they need to start collapsing down onto the bomb from the north side. Bisquick, though, does get the frag over on a sleep. That'll even things up a little bit more for them. Trade's coming out, though. Kofu gets a kill on the Bisquick. And then real elsewhere, right back on the bud. 2v2 right now. We still got that mop all the way on the top side. And, and the bomb is now uh, exposed. They, he needs to find a weapon maybe to trade out and get down there and defend. Kaik and Kofu doing what they can. Um, the defuse is going to be tickled here for a little bit, trying to bait the shot and reel elsewhere. Brilliant frag over on the Kofu. He gets that 1v1. Kaik's going to be pushing in on him now. He's got no time. He's got to get on the bomb. Five seconds left to start to defuse, and it's going to be real elsewhere. Gets the frag. Just, oh, my goodness. Solid plays. Yeah, Solid plays there. Players were low. Kofu and Kaik were both low enough so elsewhere could one shot them with the mop so they just had to push they couldn't sit on the bomb the bomb was in their favor and that middle line of sight in the map really came in favor to both teams we saw bud get a pick off that security window all the way into the lower bar but we also saw the mop picks come out from there and that line of sight just it worked for both teams they counterplayed off it perfectly and either team could have won that round but it looks like Ardvarks did take it up Real elsewhere, like they had the momentum. Definitely the MVP of that map. There, uh, brilliant play with the mop, hitting all of his shots essentially, and just really brought them that first round that they so desperately needed to get off on the or, set two. We are seeing the sky bridge uh, layout here, actually, so we might see some interesting vertical play on storage, or possibly even the bomb. So, possibly some concerns about Doc, but it looks like Ardvarks isn't too concerned. They are just dedicated to holding this office area because it gives them a lot of the map if they have this office area they can cut off dock they can cut off storage they have so many lines of sight from this one position and it's so hard for attackers to get to because they have to get funneled through this red door on the north side of the map so we might see a toxic play come out which could counter what Arvarks is trying to set up but there may be a shotgun player waiting there in offices like i've said shotguns are very effective on uh on factory but only in these office and storage areas maybe a knack but we might also see an igmar or even uh, even the mop come back out um from elsewhere and it looks like there is going to be a skirmish on i'm not sure side. if we'll see the mop come back out so even though it was used to great effect uh elsewhere might have uh, burnt up most of the ammo for it it might not be a useful weapon anymore to have we'll see here if they do decide to bring that out there is it is on toxic instead of a shotgun or say a knack an interesting choice from them so a lot of long-range weaponry and then uh, a few shotguns coming out. I, I think that's a pretty good setup there. Um, it's going to be real rough on uh, Lord of Pooh if he gets uh, pinched in from long-range in any way. 
that shotgun's not going to be super useful for him, but it, he, he would have to peek into that as a thing. He would have to give them that long-range fight. He's got multiple fallbacks to where he can stay safe. And so it's going to be this eastern side push uh, coming in here for SPG. Uh, a two-group split, 2v3. And looks like storage is going to be the three-man stack coming in. I'm not sure if they're going to try and push both doors at the same time or if they're all just going to stack onto that far eastern door. No, it looks like sleep is rotating around. So it's going to be kind of a, a three-way split. But... Arik is all uh, falling back pretty far, and you're going to see real, real elsewhere uh, instantly making the call to kind of take a take a safer approach with that mop. He's going to be falling back. Lone Wolf though getting engaged from long range. Oh, and it's going to be a TK coming out. Kaik gets killed by Tibber on accident, shot in the back of the head. I'm sorry, other way around. Kaik gets a kill on Tibber, but he's going to make his way in now and try and redeem himself. Lone Wolf just playing that corner down by the uh, the toxic goo there. Uh, Fragne comes out, does not make it over there, but he is taken out finally, Sleep getting the kill. And now Vuff is also taken down. So you only have members up on that sky bridge left alive. They're, they've got a little bit of an overwatch on the bomb, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Bisquick gets one kill, but now Kaik's coming in on the top side, gets a kill on the real elsewhere. He's fully flanked them up there on the sky bridge, and it's down, just down to Bisquick, and he's not going to be able to do a whole lot to stop this defuse. In fact, it's going to be Kaik. Very crisp, clean kills on the AP25, just bursting that thing to its full potential. It seems like SPG definitely has it in their mindset that they need to dedicate to these strategies now that Aardvarks is getting up to pace. We saw some interesting mechanics come out this round. We did see Sleep actually take the uh, take the road flare that was on site and chuck it towards Doc to prevent um, Busquick from even like trying to peek out and get a kill. That was really smart from him. That definitely helped. Uh, that definitely helped in the way of preventing Busquick from changing positions, which just allowed Kike to get the kill onto Busquick with a three K at the end of the round. Something impressive to say the least. We did see power grow out in that round, so it definitely gave the advantage over, especially in positions like Office where you can't really use those flares. It's something similar to C Store. There's very very close corners in those offices. So road flares aren't as much as a priority or as helpful as they may seem, especially with close range weapons. Definitely. So, and on that map there, it seemed like the design of the map basically was you have choke point after choke point after choke point to fall back through. And maybe the downfall of Aardvarks was they were kind of giving those each up a little bit too quickly. And when you get into that last area, there's just not really many really good defensible spots that you can take up. Um, especially when you had three players all up on Skybridge and uh, th they just had no line of sight onto the enemies coming up to flank them at all from that position. So then we do uh, have a new layout here for Sea Store. Uh, what we have seen some teams do, we've seen a simultaneous shed and office drop, but we've also just seen five man office drops and just completely try to overpower Freezer and get that button. Obviously, there's the option to wall charge here, and it looks like SBG is kind of interested in that. They're kind of fiddling around with the plan, trying to figure out what they want to do. But it seems like the office shed play is what they want to go for. It seems like the team's default and the button. The button is definitely going to be a point of interest for both teams. And there might be some interesting barbed wire from Aardvarks here. It seems... There's, a, there's not much going anywhere because there is an entrance by Arcade, but I don't see how a barbed wire on that bathroom to storefront will help them. That's just close range there. Any shotgun can kill at that range. And I'm not sure if these barbed wires are the best layout from Aardvarks. We'll see, uh, we'll see if they do help out, though, as SPG does seem dedicated to this freezer sort of shed office uh, piece of yeah. map. Map number three, so we will see no auto shotty. I'm uh, did they use that up already? I don't recall. I I'm... don't recall it either. So we're not seeing the, the power weapon come out, and I don't think they've used it yet. So interesting call there from Arc. I don't know if they just maybe forgot or decided against it. So, but they are going to be uh, Gruber shotgun heavy coming into this. Um. And again, it's going to be a pretty tight-knit group down over towards the bomb. This is a little bit better layout for them this round than I think we've seen previous times with the huge split. Real Elsewhere are going to be the point of contact over onto Teller uh, if they do decide to push into that. And they did kick that door open on the shed, maybe just as a noise cue to make them worry about it a little bit more. 
but here comes the reaching charge and smoke smoke coming in flashes coming in no smoke but bud's going to be just pushing right through over towards the bathroom side and he's going to get engaged by buzzquick buzzquick takes him down in a hurry and it's now going to be sleep on the back side of that he's also taken down just three members left alive in a hurry though trades coming out uh, as well so 3v3 it might be even 2v3 the bomb's being tickled here buzzquick is down a little bit of lag coming in so i can't confirm that lord of Pooh uh trying to make his way through that that barbed wire ends up hurting them they can't get into the room and their own barbed wire was basically their downfall there as kaik and kofu could basically just hold that angle and start the bomb defuse from timber like so said, yeah that barbed wire definitely hurt them and they they did actually have a, a good idea for putting barbed wire on this uh lower storefront area to prevent anybody from rotating on that right side they wanted to force them up into this left lane where they could just funnel them with shotguns and that's where they got their first two kills but then after that when the tellers player got killed and all the shutters were open there was just too much pressure on the site and all the players were either forced out of the site or were already outside of the site and couldn't push in and like you said that barbed wire did kind of turn around and hurt them uh it, something that they wanted to take advantage of and they thought would go a certain way was a risk that they took and it just hurt them in the end very much so yeah de definitely a, a good call on that being a questionable um place p to put that and we saw it do exactly what you thought it would and being a hindrance rather than a help to the defending team there for aardvarks we do so. see the same kill store layout action or uh, excuse me kill house layout and that window there that window on security is definitely going to be a strong suit for both teams. We have seen it for both teams. We've seen kills from the Saber. We've seen kills from the Mop. But I'm wondering who's going to win this round. Because we did see that 3k um, from elsewhere with the Mop. But we also saw Bud get some early kills on that window. So I'm not sure who's going to win these engagements. But it does seem like Aardvarks wants to go for a stairwell push in security possibly. Their SPG might be aware of this and they might set a player in security, but it looks like they're not too concerned about it. They're more concerned about this backstage and dance floor breach than they are uh, than they are a security breach. It does we'll look like we'll see coming here. We'll see if uh, they copy that strat, though, on SPG side and put the mop defending from bar area because that was so effective from elsewhere. But... Copying plays from other teams can come back to bite you because, you know, there's always a little bit of luck involved sometimes. You know, I'm not saying that there's anything against the skill of these players, but in most cases, I don't know if elsewhere would get that uh, 3K every single time. So expecting to do that up in bar area, it was probably not going to happen time and time again for whoever's defending. It looks but... like Aardvarks has decided against bringing the Sabre this round for those windows, and that might actually hurt them, I feel like. They did bring a lot of APs, but they do also have a grenade on Lord of Pooh, and that may be able to help them clear out security. That may be the plan there. But Office is still going to be very frustrating to deal with, especially if you don't dedicate a player to security. So we will be seeing that strategy copy, though. Bud is up there in VIP with a mop. We'll see if he can use it to the same effect. So here comes a five-man pushing. There's the mop kill. Bud right on the buff. Instantly down a man there for the Aardvark side. So they're going to have to, you know, lick their wounds and make their way through here. As they kick in backstage, there comes the Molly out. Real elsewhere tries to push in. He's taking the fight with Kofu. Can't do anything about it, though. And now they're two men down, and only a little bit of chip damage has been done out to the SPG side. So they do take off as they do have that, but they got to be wary that that mop can peek through at any time. There goes a shot and misses on the wolf. And, you know, they might have to bail out of there very quickly there. The mop has line of sight onto him. Big damage coming out from it, though. And Busquick is going to make the call. He's falling back. They're giving up stairwell. They're giving up office. And they're just, they've already got two guys pinning them in. Timber gets the one kill. Kofu's there to back him up at any point. And there goes the final kill. Til Timber gets two. Kofu gets two. But the big thing is, Bud, he had a lot of the mop chip shot damage, including the first kill on the, over on the buff. I think I'm going to give him that round MVP. That was definitely important. I mean, uh, I know it's coming, but I can't wait for that first person view because that was a cross the map headshot. That was one of the most impressive shots that I, I have ever seen in this game. And especially Kofu actually backed up that uh, that backstage push he completely countered it with barely any help, maybe just 
one player rotating over to help him, but Kofu locked down the south side while Bud just completely held down office with that long-range shot. That that basically won them the round from the start, and all the other players on SBG just sat in bar. They were just waiting for somebody to push site, but Bud and Kofu just locked down the round for them. Yeah, and again, another thing that I want to see come out with this game eventually is after round damage stats, because even though Bud only got the single kill on the mop to open it up, I'm pretty sure he hit two and maybe even three other players as they were making their way around. So definitely uh, doing his part there with the super weapon. I would love to see some ADR uh, statistics. And it looks like SPG um, is worried about a skybridge take, like this north office red door and it seems they would be right aardvarks does want to go for it it looks like they just want to go straight in and drop into sight maybe we'll see a nade come out because these windows here are very open on the north side we might see a nade go straight onto that site because there is good cover there so there might be a defender playing there on the side of spg but we'll see how it goes because there is some concern about toxic for spg but it doesn't seem like Ardvarks wants to go for that. They just want to beeline it straight to the site and put as much pressure on the bomb as possible. Because in the end of the day, yes, you can get kills, but it's all about diffusing. If you can get that pressure on the bomb early, uh, the defenders are kind of forced to get into these awkward positions where they can't really hold the bomb, especially with that large piece of cover right in front of the bomb. They're forced to push in and they just give up fights over and over and over again. Uh, essentially, snowballing the round to the attacking side so maybe we'll see some early round pressure on the bomb but it does look like they want to go for a slow play they are walking yeah de definitely kind of a, a do or die round though for arc as they if they lose this they're going to be down oh the four nade to one. messed up oh no that's going to be damage onto three players from art of arcs they tried to get sleep off dog yeah, Sleep uh, just making a whole bunch of noise. He's going to be able to figure out maybe from sound cues that they are heading to that northern side of the map. Vuff going to be the one leading the way. They did bring the Saber this map, uh, which is probably a good call. They're going to need that. And again, we're going to see Bud on the mop trying to counter it. So maybe a uh, Saber on mop fight coming out here at some point during the round. Have to see if Bisquick can uh, make good use of that. He's going to be the one kicking the door open. Uh, usually you leave the, the saber to uh, sit in the back and wait for that door to open on so And there comes the first kill, Bud, with the mop, deletes real elsewhere early in the round, and now gets the second kill. It's Kaik going to be doing that over on the Lone Wolf, and already uh, back foot being seen here for Arik as they lose another member. It's going to be Bud again. He is not missing any shots with this mop this time. And you got two members left alive of Arc, both with low health. There goes one more. Oh. Bud on the triple kill takes a fight. 4K Bud. for Bud with wow. a mop. Just absolutely deletes all of Arc there. And he's going to put them on match point now. One that more round and they win this. That height advantage definitely helped Bud out because when you're on that higher plane, when you're on that higher uh, Z value, you can see the, more of the head because you get that top down view of the head. So you have the front and the top of the head to hit instead of just the front or say just the back or just the side. That vertical play from Bud won them the round. And because he hit his shots, he got an easy 4K out of it as well. He's clearly been trained to use this gun and he knows how to have discipline with it. I don't know if I'd call it easy, but it was definitely a 4K and... He's going to be a player to watch out uh, in development coming in future games because he has shown a very high degree of skill with the super weapons, especially the mob. I haven't seen him yet on the Saber, though, um, and we might get that chance here in a little bit if uh, R can hold on for a bit longer. But again, they're going to be facing four match points uh, they're going to have to come back from and try and, you know, steal victory away from the clutches of death right now. Like we said... Uh... SPG might get a little bit loose. They might get a little finicky here. And Arc might be able to take one or two rounds. But at this point, I'm going to have to start agreeing with you. I feel like Aardvarks uh, might be in the ditches for this one. Unless they can pull out something amazing. I feel like SPG has already closed this map out. Especially with Bud knowing how to play that mop so well. You see a very early worry coming in about that office skylight push. That it looks like they're going to possibly double... Um 
double block that all the way in with barbed wire. Uh, but I'm not seeing anything maybe hinting that uh, SPG wants to put, or I'm sorry, that Ar Arc wants to push up there. There so... are hints towards power, though. It looks like both teams are concerned about that. And with that large piece of cover there, um, you're either going to have to set a player back storage and just give up power if they push it, or you're going to have to dedicate one player to the actual power uh, power switch, which can be risky if they get taken out. You've essentially given up man advantage there. But we will see two players in Freezer. They are concerned about the office skylight, and that is a valid concern because Aardvarks is looking to do it. It does seem like they want to go to the roof, and they're going to be walking all the way there. Slow, steady, methodical push. Let's see if they do make it up onto that roof for that skylight push, and yes, they will. Uh, I'm not sure where Lord of Poop's going. He's looking a little lost right now. He needs to get over there with his team here in a hurry. So four men at least coming in for that office roof push. It's going to be Sleep and Kaik uh, waiting for it. But most importantly, Bud. Bud's got his eyes just trained through that doorway, waiting for somebody to drop down. There goes the drop. Four members in, and Bud and Kaik are going to be waiting on him from the south side. Molly goes in. Mo Another Molly goes in. Oh, a lot of good chip jam is coming in out of those two utility weapons. Trying to wall bang over on a sleep. Sleep's going to make his way out of there, but Kofu goes down in the meantime. All of Arak is pinned in place right now, and it's going to be... Oh, Kai ends up burning in the molly. So it's a 4v3 chance here for Arak to take the round, but still on that back line. He hasn't really been given much of an angle to shoot on anyone. Real elsewhere are going to come through, and it's going to be a, a quick fight coming out there. Several members going down. Tibber getting traded out for Lone Wolf. So just two members left alive per side. And it's down to Lone Wolf and Lord of Pooh. See if they can do anything here against Sleep and Bud. Bud's still got the mop, hasn't really taken a shot with it. And he gets smoked off. So he's going to try and make his push through, potentially, as Lone Wolf and Pooh are coming down. Close range fight with Bud. Can Bud do anything about it? He falls back quickly, doesn't get the kill, though. Taken out. Oh, and oh, Sleep, very dangerous play there. He goes under the skylight. The, uh, the UAV tried to light him up, couldn't do it. But in the end, it's going to be Lord of Pooh finishing things off. He's going to get that bomb defuse, saving Arik's life for another round. But that came close. Lone Wolf, at the end, <laughs> yeah, at the end, Lone Wolf uh, had to come in and get, you know, three kills and also uh, dis dishonorably discharge his own teammate, Lone Wolf. A little bit of confusion there as they came in and came to the close range on Bud. Bud was, you know, almost able to get out of that fight, scot free, but. Uh, fortunately, the kill came in from Lone Wolf to even things up. Yeah, we and... saw the auto shotty on the north side, and that completely forced uh, the last two players to go down to Bud. And using that smoke, it gave them the opportunity to push because Bud didn't have an automatic weapon. He had a one shot, and he had an LS, which is an interesting combo to see an LS with a mop and, uh, instead of, say, the default pistol. But... In the end, the smoke there and having only one player there helped them um, because if they decided to push the north side, they were basically trapped. As we saw, those two mollies came out and it completely split the team in half. And there could have just been wall bangs there. There could have been plenty of wall bangs just to take out both sides. And But the smoke saved them. Some quick thinking came out from Aardvarks and it won them the round somehow, even with a team kill on a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, so we are back to that 4-2 score line. We've seen this before in the previous set. We'll see if R can push it to 4-3 and hopefully even 4-4. Four, four. Um, again, I'm still rooting for your your call. I would love to see you be right. We get a, a map 3 out of this. A map 3 is always exciting. We see the, the desperate measures come out of both teams when it's that close. But considering, uh, considering SPG is on attack now, Bud isn't going to have that mop. He's not going to be able to get those shots we might see him bring out the saber but uh other than that we're not gonna see power weapons really from the attackers maybe a saber play but that it, like you said earlier on that is very risky considering it's the first round but with a map like this where we've seen constant window play on office to vip i I'm, i've got to predict there's going to be a saber in play yeah, we've seen this map one twice already, literally on the back of a mop sitting in VIP, firing across into office and security. You know that both sides have predicted this. You know that it's going to be probably the call. We'll see if SPG want to hard counter that. Put the saber into the hands of Bud. See if he can't, you know, bait out a shot from the VIP mop. 
and try and take him down in return. And here we go. And yes, it is. Saber in the hands of Bud. We'll see the fight coming out real elsewhere versus Bud is basically what this might, might boil down to. But notice and... his marker, Bust Quick. He's just sitting there. He might yeah. get a free 2K, maybe even three here if he plays this correctly. So he, he's getting those sound cues. They're coming in. Lobby push. Molly coming out, trying to block it up. Bust Quick going to get into a little bit of a fight here with Sleep. Not getting enough damage off Sleep's turn around. He's going to take him down. That's not what Bus Quick needed to do there. He needed to get that frag. And now the, here comes the VIP push. They're countering on to Real Elsewhere hard. He's very heavily pinned up there. I'm sorry, that's not Real Elsewhere. That is Lone Wolf. He's pinned up there. Real Elsewhere is back all the way off the backstage. And Bud's waiting to push in. Bud's all on his own. He's making a few peeks up there. And now the whole top side of the map is under the control of SPG. First kill from Real Elsewhere, though. Goes on to Kai. There's the mob coming into play from the opposite side of the map. We expected it. A lot of chip damage coming out. Few wounded players for SPG as well. They can still pull this back, even though they're a man down on the Eric side. So Bud's going to make his way around now. He's going to head to the top side as this long-range fight is taken out. Buff, though, gets the kill on the Wasted. So we're, we're even now. 3v3. A lot of damage, though, has been dealt out onto Ark as well. So they are in dire straits. Uh, Close-range fight going to be coming out shortly here. Bud taking a fight from the doorway, peeking right into them. It's basically a door peek fight. Bomb defuse being tickled over by, by Tibor. Sleep is there covering him. And then the saber from Bud. Can he do anything about it? And they're, it's going to force him to maybe push out and try and get a little bit of ground. Tibor, Sleep, both going down. It's all down to Bud, and he's going to be the last one up. Oh, no, it, he he is down. So it's, it's, a, uh, it's a clean round there. That was a very, very smart from Aardvarks. We saw Elsewhere immediately rotate off of that north side when they realized uh, SPG was trying to put as much pressure there as possible. Bud was holding that window, but because the timing there, they just had unlucky timing, and the mop was able to freely rotate to the site and get an easy kill later in the round. They didn't, they didn't properly watch that rotate off as they, they could have easily pinched them, is what I'm trying to explain. If yeah. Bud was on that window at the right time, there would have been no rotate out, rotates out there. SPG would have had two kills, and they would have had that round. They would have had the series. But Hardbarks was very smart there. Uh, the timings were just in their favor, it seems. And proper, call from, proper call from Real Elsewhere, though. Once he realized it wasn't going to be that, uh, that push that they thought it was, that it was going to be a counter to the mop up in VIP, he bailed out of there. He bailed out, changed positions, and managed to get some damage and frags off. Very important that he had done that in that round. I was super good for him because uh, three players from those fights were already lit up. He didn't even have to hit headshots. He could just body shot them at that point. And it does look like a dock play might be coming out. Uh, I am a little bit concerned for that smoke on conveyor because Skybridge is uh, looking a little high up here. They might be able to see over the tip of that smoke. And... Aardvarks is concerned about it. it. They might be putting barbed on this, like, toxic vat area by docks, but we might also see a toxic push come out from SVG because power is freely available if they can just take out that player um, that's going to be playing on the Skybridge offices area. Skybridge is powerful here, but the bomb is in cover from that view, so if... SPG just decided to rush in and get onto the back side of the bomb and just hold it with a very hard defensive strategy there. Uh, there's a chance they could defuse it without Arik being able to do a whole bunch to stop them, and that might be their, their strategy there, especially with the smoke placements that they put out. They might be looking like to just make a, a quick push through docks and just bully their way onto the bomb. Yeah, they're um, using a wall charge here instead of a door, so no crouching. It might be a full push here. It might be full send, but... Busquick does have a Molotov, so we might see uh, some counterplay here from that push. And we do, no we, yeah, we do have Bust and Volpic over there, or Bufarik, uh, who's uh, just waiting for that dock push. Uh, Busquick has fallen back just a little bit, so it's going to be a very heavy deal here for Buff. See if he can't uh, get some frags here, and so here comes that initial push. And not a whole lot of movement coming out so far by the... That's the like arc side. First kill, though. Real elsewhere. He's the first one to go down, but two frags quickly traded back. Buff and Bisquick both getting a frag out onto Bud and Tibber there. And so we're going to see uh, that defense working out very well. Kaik going to try and push up into Skybridge, though. Engaging. Doesn't get the kill. Now he does. Finally, over on to Kofu. 
Lord of Pooh sitting there topside. He's going to have to deal with sleep here as they both come around. And, oh, and there's just Ooh. single shot from that shotgun there. Absolutely obliterates sleep. Doesn't know what to do there. And it's just going to be all down to Kaik. Very good chance here that they can have this all tied up. Taik looking for two frags here over on the buff and Lord of Pooh. We'll see if he can do that. He's going to maybe try and bait out a tickle on the bomb. See if he can get them to come to him as he's making his way down to right towards buff. Buff is just hiding in that corner. He's going to be able to hear him in. And, oh, kill from Kaink. He's going to get it. 1v1 now. It's all down to Lord of Who. But time uh, time is on his side right now. He's got 30 seconds to even start this bomb defuse, which he's going to do. He's going to make Lord of Who make the first move here. As uh, the bomb tickle has gone out, Lord of Who not falling for the initial bait. But he's just going to go for it. And it's going to be Kaik. Kaik seals out the round. He ends it with a 3K in the end in a just... Brilliant play of uh, showmanship there. We haven't seen that come out from him so far, but he's going to bring that victory over to SPG. That <laughs> The chances were there for Arik. They almost pulled this one out and brought it to mm, a very, very fifth round for them. But Yeah, we saw an interesting barbed wire placement on the bomb, which actually forced uh, Kaik to play a bit further back when he defused, which could have get, given uh, Lord of Pooh uh, a kill. But Kike knew that. He immediately tried to get behind cover, even if he was in the barbed wire to defuse. And that that was just one of the smartest uh retakes that I have uh that I've seen, especially in a 1v3. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened with uh Buff Vup there down on the bottom side. He uh just kind of was hanging out there and uh um, you know, I, I know he could have heard that player running in. He could have heard Kaik run in on him and just didn't really react to it in time. You really don't want to let a player just get that much range in on you uh, before taking a fight, I would say. But um, brilliant play there coming out from SPG. They win this one, two maps to zero. And uh, But we did see some a lot more solid gameplay coming out in the end from ARC. And... Uh, just not enough to pull through in the end, though, unfortunately. I would have loved to see them push it to a third map, but it doesn't seem like that's what Fate wanted. We saw the uh, the plenty of resets happen, and it looks like it was just on the side of uh, SPG, and they just were easily able to pull it out because they just knew how uh, they knew how Arik Ardvarks played. They adapted to Arik's Ardvarks uh, changing, and they just adapted to it even if they had to clutch even if they had to bring out those 1v3s as we saw in that last round they adapted to it they had the gun skill to win those rounds um i'm pretty sure we do have an interview actually coming up and it is going to be with tibur Terran. so um give me just a moment indeed Right. So yeah, uh, I'd like to wel welcome uh, Tibber Taran of SPG to the interview room. Uh, Tibber, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing all right. That's good to hear. So um, we saw some really strong rounds come out uh, from the side of SPG, but then Arik kind of uh, kind of took the momentum from you guys. Did you guys kind of uh, lose your pacing there, or uh, we you some rounds? we uh, forgot that. Yeah, which which side to play on, and we started playing aggressive on defense, and that was really hurting us. Uh, at least in the second game there, but I think that I think that mostly it was uh, just our our own misplays uh, that you know um, we we were able to turn turn bad situations good even when we made them. I definitely have to agree with that. And I have one more question before I hand it over to Biaku asking you questions. How did you guys put so much faith in those sniper plays? Because we saw a lot come out from Bud. Bud was just dominating with the saber and uh, and the uh, the mop. Has have you guys trained? Is he like your dedicated uh, sniper, or what's going on there? Uh, he he's not our dedicated sniper, but he is the person who picks up sniper every single round. Uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, no, we we really like to play our corners. We we don't like to play the angles like that. We, we prefer the positioning. But in in that uh, in this, we decided, all right, we should try we should try some of those peaks, some of those angles, and I think it really paid off for us. All right, Biako, do you have any questions for him? 
Yeah. Um, first of all, congratulations on the win today. Very much so. Uh, so going into this, um, you guys seem very organized on your stretch. Is that something that you've been practicing? And uh, like most of all, we've seen, you know, you made different calls that on the final map there, you, you kind of just all decided we're going to push a five man stack in. But then we were seeing that two two or three man split um, in a pincer move on other maps. Is that usually your go to thing is to either just stack five mans or three two split? Usually the three two split is what we like, but you know, stacking five mans is sort of risky as far as we're concerned. Because if you make one misplay there, everyone's dead. One bag one bad frag with the mollies being actually worth worth using right now. Uh, one one good molly, you, the entire five is down. So the we like to that split a lot more. Uh, however, there are cases where splitting you just don't have the the momentum. You can't gain the momentum to just push through whatever they're uh, holding. And then the next thing I wanted to ask, uh, the one map, I forget the name of it, but it had the uh, the VIP Overwatch where we saw oh, the mop being used yeah, to great effect. Yeah. That was Green Door VIP, no Red Door into VIP? Yeah, so when we yeah. saw that come around for the third time, you guys made a very clear and concise call. We're not going to make the obvious push on the bottom side of the map. We're just going to hard counter that mop up on the top of VIP. Yeah. It didn't end up working out for you, but it came close, and it was definitely uh, was that, was that, that one, an was that, that an experienced was... strat call there though? Because you had seen just how overpowering that had been the two previous uh, times. Yeah, on the first round, when on the first round we we sort of realized, wow, that's the that's the right spot to take. So when it came back around, we we said, all right, we we sort of want to eco this round just because we're we this is not a good map for us to push any of the other doors. They have too many angles for them. So if we just run lobby, push straight up into VIP, take the mop down, we're gonna have a much better chance. But they had the mop on the bomb that that second time, if I recall. Uh, and so I think that part of the issue was, uh, at least for me, uh, when I tried to put a mag into my gun, it didn't do it. And so I only came in with two AP mags, and I had to switch to pistol halfway through, uh, which didn't didn't help anything. Very yeah, uh, very rough there, but. Uh, again, congratulations. These guys came out on top uh, in two maps. Uh, got a little bit closer at the end, uh, that final final map with the 1v1 I, fight. Yeah, we, I was I was pretty sure it was going to go to uh, 4v4, and it was going to be anyone's game at that point. So a big clutch there from uh, Kike. So he's <laughs> also a star player for your team, uh, along with Bud. We saw both of them like making some pretty ridiculous plays, and I'm sure yeah. the rest of the team will get their time to shine coming up from what we've seen. I mean, it was impressive to say the least. Even though, uh, I'm sorry to say this, but I really wanted to see Arik bring it to a third map. But I was definitely impressed by your performance. Uh, you uh, I, definitely brought it. If I if if you had uh, if you had uh, asked me how it turned out, I would have said Arik would have been on. We would have uh, Arik would have taken the second one. We would have gone to the third round, and then it would have been anyone's game still. That's good to hear. Uh, we always love some friendly competition between our teams. I don't have any more questions. Biako, do you have any uh, any uh, last questions or any last words for Tibber? Uh, no, just uh, again, congratulations and, uh, you know, hope to see you again soon down the line for another match. Hopefully, yeah. And that's going to be our interview, ladies and gentlemen. That was uh, with Tibber Terran of SPG. We did see SPG 2-0 fashion today. Um, and we saw some very interesting gunfights as well, some very interesting strategies. We saw splits, we saw five mans, we saw Molotovs everywhere. And in the end, SPG pulled through. But in terms of my remarks, I have nothing more to say. I'm pleasantly surprised with this match. Biako, do you have anything to say about the match before we close out? Uh, just exciting as ever, and uh, just waiting for the next one coming up here in uh, just a little while. So head back on over later today, and. You'll get to see plenty more Due Process League uh, here today. Yes, it looks like today we have a match in uh, two hours. And yeah, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure to stop back for that. And that's going to be it for today. Uh, at least not for today, but for now, excuse me. We saw SVG take out Eric in 2-0 fashion. Something very impressive. And I want to thank you all. I want to thank Tibber for the interview. It was very thank. I'm very thankful for that. And Biako, thank you so much for being here to cast with me. Always. But that's going to wrap it up for now. Make sure to tune back in in about two hours as 
GPL goes to the next match.